this year, uh, instead of writing my bachelor thesis, which I still need to do, uh, I wrote a book, a tech book about Redux, which I want to tell you about now. <laughs> so this talk is, uh, consists of two parts. The first part will be the story on how I got to write the tech book, and the second part will be the learnings that I had from this experience. So first of all, let me quickly introduce myself. Uh, I'm a startup founder, which is my main thing that I do. Uh, I'm also a maintainer of a couple of open source libraries, which uh, includes Redux Undo and other higher order reducers. You, you might have heard of or used some of them. Uh, and now I'm also the author of a tech book, which is great. Uh, first of all, uh, before I start, uh, who here knows Redux or has heard of Redux? Uh, okay, that's great. Uh, who has re used Redux in a project before? Oh, okay, that's also great. So basically Redux is like a, is a predictable state container for your app, JavaScript apps, and it, it means it, it's based on this simple uh, principle where you have a function that takes your current state and an action and returns a new state. And that's the only way state changes can happen in a Redux application. And there's this library called React Redux, which connects your React app to Redux. It injects the state and action creators and, and so on. Uh, but you probably already know this. <laughs> so uh, how it all started is I got this email earlier this year in January and I, I, I was like, it was from a publisher that I actually had heard of at the VR Developer Conference. So I was like, oh, so uh, they, they, that, that's like a real publisher and uh, I should probably respond to this email. Uh, so that they were like, uh, we're looking for an author to write a Redux cookbook, which is like a small book that has a couple of examples on, on how to do things with Redux. And would you be interested in collaborating with us? And I was like, yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> like, <laughs> so it, it all started with I had to write an outline for the book, which uh, is basically like you, you have to uh, define your audience for the book, the mission for the book, and uh, an overview of the chapters and what the reader will learn in each chapter and how long each chapter will be. So it's basically the, the bare bones, the structure of, of your book, the general structure of your book. Uh, when I emailed this outline to the uh, acquisition editor who wrote the previous email. Uh, I got, after a couple of review rounds, I, I got this answer, which means the publisher was very happy with my outline. And not just that, but they thought it would actually be better to make it a full Redux book and not just a small cookbook. So uh, I was like, wow, that's, that's amazing. I mean, uh, a full book is, it's like uh, almost 400 pages, so the, it, it was a lot of work, but I was like, well, now that, I already, that I'm already in, I, I gotta do it. <laughs> so uh, upon, after that, a bunch of legal stuff happened, as you can probably imagine, like setting up and uh, the contract and payment, defining deadlines for each chapter, and then finally signing the contract. And after that, the hard part starts, which is writing the actual book. Uh, that's, uh, there were a lot of deadlines for each chapter. Uh, it, 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 the deadlines were set in a way where I would have to write about two pages a day. But it act, for me, it actually ended up being that I wrote zero pages some days and then 10 or 20 on others. So it's not always, it doesn't always work like that. But that's what deadlines are for. And I, I want to talk about it later in my learnings. Uh, after you finish your book, uh, there comes the editing process. And it actually kind of feels like this background slide here. It, Imagine you're writing your book in a certain way and then there's 10 people and 10 and each of those pe persons all have their own style of doing things or, or their, their own way of explaining concepts and they all want the book to turn out their way or the best way that what they think is the best way. And then uh, that's basically what the editing process is like. Everyone has comments, everyone wants to change something and after I got my book back after the first round of editing, I was like, what the fuck did they do to my book? How can you mess it up that much? But uh, after, after a couple of review rounds, I, I, it, we actually uh, ended up with a version that we were all happy with. 
And I do think that the book is a lot better now than my first draft. So it, it does pay off. It, it is, it, it's like magic. At first, you, 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 you have your, your write your draft and everything. And then you think, OK, now I'll have to make everything consistent. But no, you have an editing team who does that for you and then makes everything consistent and makes sure that uh, you have like a technical editor that makes sure that, you, that the technologies that you use are like up to date and that you're not uh, explaining bullshit or like explaining it in a complicated way. And then there are people who just look at your writing style. So there's like different kinds of people that work on this book. And uh, all together, they, they, they really make it uh, a, a good thing in the end. Um, after many sleepless nights, I woke up one day and it was published. I, I, I went to Amazon and suddenly there, there, there was my book. Like I'm listed as an author on Amazon. So that's awesome. <laughs> and then uh, a couple of weeks later, <laughs> a couple of weeks later, I actually got my book in the mail, which felt even more awesome because you suddenly have a physical copy of your book and not just the, the Amazon page. Uh, yeah, that's basically the story of, of how it all happened. And now I want to talk a little bit about what I learned on this journey. Um, the first learning is that there's a lot that you don't know uh, about anything. And uh, even if you do know a lot about it, you, don't, you probably don't know it well enough to explain it to someone who hasn't heard of it before. Which there's this really good quote that I, I love is, is if, from Albert Einstein. If you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. And I really think that's true because there were many situations in the book where I was like, uh, yeah, I totally understand React routing, for example, and then I, or re routing with Redux and React. And then I was like, wait, actually, how does it really work? And how would be the best way to approach it for a beginner? And you have to like think, uh, you, you, you have to think that they, they've never heard of any of this before, and you have to explain it to them. So you, you need like a new approach to everything. Uh, the second learning is that there are many ways to approach a problem and you have to kind of have to find the best way to explain a concept if you're writing a book. But you also have to make sure to keep it easy to understand because your reader is not going to know everything that you know uh, and they want to learn from your book. So that, that's, an import, that's also important. Uh, my third learning, and this is a very important one for me especially, is that deadlines are very important, uh, especially when they are enforced, because that's exactly the problem with my bachelor thesis, is that there are no strict deadlines. I set my own deadlines. So what happens is that in, in, instead of, in contrast to when I was writing the book, which meant that I had a, a deadline every couple of weeks, so I, I had to, uh, like deliver it by the end of the week or something. So I, I, was, I kept writing on it during the whole week and managed to do it until the deadline. But for my bachelor thesis, it doesn't really work like that at all. So what, what happened with my bachelor thesis, and I'm, I'm kind of stealing this example from a very famous talk that you might know on um, procrastination by Tim Urban. Uh, and there, in, in, at the beginning, when I started my thesis, I thought it would, it would be like this. Like I start out working a little on it every day and then work a little more on it. And, and, and then towards the end, I would do like a lot of review and uh, finalize my thesis. But uh, then I started writing the book and, it, and like the, my thesis, which was supposed to be the whole year, I suddenly only had uh, like nine months left, so uh, it was kind of, like, or six months left, so it was kind of like this. I had to do a lot more work every day and uh, even more work at, towards the end. And then it got even worse because I was busy with my startup and suddenly I only had three months left. And in, now I'm here, which is I have a week left to finish most of my thesis or like end of, end of January max. And I still haven't made much progress because there are no deadlines. So 
that's, that really is a big problem. And if, if you have a similar problem, uh, I really encourage you to check out this talk here. I have a link to my slides uh, at the end, so you don't have to write it down now. But yeah, he, he, he also uh, hopefully has an idea on how to fix this problem. The next learning is that the editing process is tough, but it, it is really useful and it really does make the book consistent. And it, it's, it's what makes the book uh, an actual book. Because when you write your book, you have your own style and you, you, there's the publisher's style and then there's your style and then there's uh, the way you want things to be or the way the reader want, would want things to be. And in the end, a lot of people are involved. Everyone has their own um, point of view. And, uh, but together it makes a nice and consistent book. So it is really useful. And there are many people involved, so you really have to make compromises. But that's OK, because they all want, in the end of, at the end of the day, they all want a, to publish a good book. And uh, so they are all going to um, help, help you with, with, the, with the book, essentially. Uh, and at this point, I would really like to thank the publisher for the responsiveness because I, there were some final changes that I that I made. Like when I got the final version of my book, I still noticed some mistakes because I'm a perfectionist, and there were like a, a sentence was in there twice after the editing process, and I was like, "No, the reader is gonna be like, what the fuck? You read the sentence, and then you read the same sentence again. Like you can't do that." And they actually fixed it on a holiday where they weren't supposed to work, but they fixed it for me on that day. And it still made, all of my changes still made it into the final book. So really props to the publisher here. This, this, it was a really nice experience. Uh, while, while we wait, are there any questions? Because we're almost done, so yes? Uh, I started in January and the book got published in August. Uh, that's actually an interesting question. Um, I wrote it with the current state of the art, and I also looked at what uh, pro if there's anything new. But it, in the end, it, uh, there was a technical reviewer uh, in like the month before publishing, and he looked through everything and he made sure that I used the latest uh, technology of all of that. And obviously, if new stuff comes out now, the book is not going to have it. There might be a revised version at some time, but uh, basically that's how it works. So that they, they do ensure that uh, you have to you use the state of the art technology, and at least at the time of publishing the book. Okay, and yes. Uh, my thesis is about uh, configuration of uh, 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 usability of configuration trees. So basically, you, you know the Windows registry. Uh, basically, I'm trying to make something like the Windows registry, a very generic uh, configuration editor, but to make it in a nicer and usable way. It's not connected. I mean, it uses React and Redux, but it's not directly connected to it now. Okay, I'm almost there. I need to save the other QuickTime video. I hope that actually worked. Should I start a new one or is it all right? Because I, I, have, I have it saved now. <laughs> all right. Okay. I'll just, I'll just feel it. Okay. Let's go. All right. Um, yeah, and also be receptive to feedback. Obviously, you, you can't just be like, no, this is the best way to do it, and I know this because I'm the author. That, that's, that's like a, a gift. Uh, then my last learning is that you should use a good tool. At first, I used Word, which for a big project like that, it really doesn't work out. You have to deal with all the formatting yourself, and it's just a lot of work. Uh, then I used the uh, publisher's web application, which was actually a quite nice experience. And they, 
like it deals with all the formatting for you. So you just say this is a heading and it, it makes it formats it whichever way the publisher wants it to be. Uh, so this was a, a quite nice experience. And for my thesis, I use LaTeX, which is really nice if you have a lot of references and stuff, like uh, references to other scientific papers. E LaTeX will really help you out there because otherwise you're going to have to manage all that yourself. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, I encourage you to check out my book. You can view it on Amazon. You can also, if you want, you can come up to me and just flip through the pages here. So uh, thanks for listening. That's it. Yeah. Um, there, there, was, there was two parts to this. Uh, the one, uh, most of the editing went through their web app. Like they had a comment system where you could make comments and resolve them and so on. But uh, the, the days before publishing, which was like the main editing process, was actually mostly via Skype. So we were like talk, we were talking in real time and saying, should we do it this way or that way? And so it, it was a really, uh, it, it was a Skype group, and we just talked about it there. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it was really interesting, especially because I got a lot of things. I actually got good feedback from my editors, and I rewrote it in a way that they were happy with. And I was actually like, yeah, that's, that's a lot better than my first idea on how to approach this. So it, it's a, it, it is a good thing, yeah. Yes? Uh, yes, uh, how, actually how it works with the payment is uh, you get uh, some money in advance, which is their investment into the book. So when you finish like half of your chapters, you get some money. When you finish all of your chapters and when it gets published. And then later on, you get royalties for each sale of the book, which is also quite normal. Um, yeah, the, I, I think it, it was, I, I was compensated well even with the advance payment, but obviously the royalty, you, you can't control it, but uh, obviously the royalties are nice too, so I, I do think it, it, it's not just, I also don't think it's just about the, the money that I get from this book, but everything I learned and like my, my knowledge about Redux is much more full and refined now than it was before I wrote the book. Because there are just so many things that you never get to look into or you never look into in that much detail than when you have to explain it to someone who doesn't know how it works at all. I would do it again, yeah. Uh, of what? Uh, I got uh, like, I think, 2,000 euros in advance. And royalties, I think 16%, 14%, something like that. I don't know by heart, but yeah, something like that. Yes? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Um, it, is, it is really hard. Um, there were even things in the book that I had to rewrite because the technology changed while I was writing the book. I, I think the only way you can go about this is to release a revised version of the book after a while because there will be things that change and you can't really do anything about it. But you, obviously you try to use the, the current status, which means you will already, there, not everything will change especially in a beginner's book, like the concepts of Redux won't change. Maybe like a library that you use will change. But I still think that the, uh, at least the way I wrote my book, you, even if the, you can't use that exact library anymore if, or if there's a better library now, then the, the same concept still applies. So it's, uh, most of it will, won't change. And the things that will change, I think the book is written in a way that you will be able to adapt to the to using the new libraries. And I, I think that's, that's also the, the way to deal with it. It's the same way that it works at universities. They teach you 
they try to teach you the concepts and not how to do some, not exactly how to do something. Because once you know the concepts, you can learn um, new libraries to use, new tools to use on your own. So that, I think that's kind of how it works. Uh, it does the, it, it's, uh, the, the question is who does the promotion of the book? And uh, it, it's actually a corporation kind of. Like, uh, obviously the publisher does the main part of that, but there's, there are also things, they have like a, a whole kit for authors where they have ways to promote their book and they have a lot of uh, uh, promotions that you as an author can use. So it, there, there's like, the, there's two parts of it. You can promote your own book, but they also do it for you. Obviously, obviously they mostly do it for you. Exactly, yeah, they take care of all of that, yeah. Yes? I have a question about actually learning readers. Yes. Because, uh, some time ago, when I was learning readers, probably the most surprising and the most fascinating things in the whole process was watching the iPad videos by Dan. Yes. Yeah. When he actually builds readers in front of you. Yeah. Like, Yeah. I think this is something that is interesting when it comes to the learning process. I, I, I definitely think that's interesting, yes. Uh, I, I think that's the best way. Uh, that I, I really like the way Dan went uh, with his video series. And I tried to kind of uh, include uh, or do it sim in a similar way in my book. Uh, like also explain how it works internally. And I think there's, there's different stages to learning. And one of the stages where you understand how to use it, but you don't understand how it works. And then there's the deepest learning stage, which is you understand how it works, so you also know how to use it, but you know how to use it even better because you know how it works internally. And I think that's, that's like the, the best kind of learning experience you can get. So that, I, I definitely think it's a good way to learn about things. No, I, I would I would start um, with uh, I would start out with just using the tool, like using Redux, and trying to have practical examples at first. And that's also how my book works. It's very practical at first. Yeah. Um, uh, but then later on, I would go more deeply into uh, how it works internally and how these concepts. So it's as I said, it's like a staged learning process. And at first, you know how to use it, and then later you learn um, how it works internally. I think with the video series, it's kind of like a both at once. So, yeah. <laughs>